Good morning! This is Angela at FitStrongLean.com. Um, I'm a beach body coach for those people who aren't uh, familiar with me yet. So today is February 6, 2013. Um, seems like this month is already going by so fast. Um, the quote of the day today we're going to start off with is by Mark, uh, excuse me, it's by Mark Kane. Um, and he says, the first step toward success is when you refuse to be a captive of the environment in which you first find yourself. Um, you know, I think that that is, uh, you know, it's, it's a, one of those statements where you have to really think about it again. So, you know, let me, let me read it again. Uh, just because I want it to really sink in. I had to read it several times the first time I saw it as well. Okay, so Mark Kane. Uh, the first step toward success is taken when you refuse to be a captive of the environment in which you find yourself. So what does that mean? Um, what, what is your environment? Your, your environment might be work, it might be school, um, maybe it's your church, maybe it's a social group you're a part of, what, whatever it is. Um, all of those things place boundaries on us and certain expectations, um, requirements, however you want to think of it, um, you know, where they, where they expect you to act a certain way or look a certain way or do, you know, do things in a certain way. Um, and that's, you know, that's everywhere. That's part of societal norm. But, you know, when those things tell you that you have to be thin and you have to be pretty and you have to, you know, spend two hours on your hair to look good or whatever, um, it, the, the only way that we can really start to improve ourselves is by breaking free of that and saying, uh, you know what, I'm happy with how I am and I'm, I'm going to work on improving myself for me and not for you. And that is the real, you know, one of the real keys to success. You know, trust, <laughs> from my standpoint, I spent the very, you know, I spent the first three quarters of my life worrying what everybody thought of me and trying to live up to everyone else's expectations, you know, trying to be the perfect student, the perfect daughter, and then the perfect wife. And you know what? Y you can't be. It, it doesn't exist. There is no perfect. Um, so at one point, at some point, I, I decided that I was just going to learn to be happy with myself first. And that was the most important thing I ever did for myself. Um, I stopped allowing myself to be a captive of the environment I was in. I, I broke free of that and um, that was a very pivotal moment. So, you know, if you feel like you're constantly trying to please others and, and doing things just for them, stop. Do it for you. If you're not doing it for you, then it's just not worth it. Don't do it. Don't bother. Um, so anyway, we'll get off that very serious note. Uh, <laughs> personal updates on me. Um, yesterday, I, I have a Fitbit, and I don't know if you know what a Fitbit is. Um, um, I would I would show you, but it's it's clipped onto an undergarment, so I can't. Um, but a Fitbit is I call it basically a pedometer on steroids. It's actually really amazing. Uh, if you go to Fitbit.com, you can see more about that. But the your your recommended daily steps is ten thousand. Everybody according to doctors and whatever, should get at least 10,000 steps in their day. Well, since I got it in um, December, I've had a really hard time trying to hit 10,000 steps. And I don't know if it's just because it's been cold outside, uh, so I haven't been doing as much walking as I normally would outside. But yesterday was gorgeous. It was 62 degrees. Um, so my husband and I walked, walked uh, to Subway for lunch yesterday and walked back and then I went and walked and picked him up from work and so by the time that I got you know all said and done by the end of the day I had walked 12,445 steps <laughs> so I was very excited about that that is uh, it's the first time since I had it I had a Fitbit um, a little over well it might have been almost two years ago it was the very first one that they came out with and I broke it and I was just devastated uh, but back then I could I was actually hitting closer to be, between 20 and 25,000 steps on a consistent basis mm, but that was over the summer and we were walking 10 miles a day so you know uh, it's a little different um, also yesterday now last week last Tuesday I did plyometrics which is jump training for P90X and 
last Tuesday it was only my second day doing doing P90X and I could only make it 35 minutes. I mean, I was just, after 35 minutes, I was beat. That was it. I was done. <laughs> um, and in fact, I have a, a group that I'm a part of and I, I posted on there that I only made it through 35 minutes, but that's okay because I know next time I'll do better. And sure enough, yesterday was my plyo workout and I made it through all 64 minutes. And I felt so good. I was so excited and proud of myself that I, I made it through that entire workout. Because, you know, it's, it's a lot to hoist 230 pounds up in the air over and over and over again for 64 minutes. That's a lot of work. Um, so I was very excited <laughs> that I did that. Um, so next, next time will be even better, I'm sure. Um, I also got a question from uh, one of my new viewers. And I was asked, what are, what are my goals? I had been talking with her about her goals, so now that, of course, she turned it around on me and asked what my goals were. And I would say that my goals are actually pretty simple. Um, first thing is I need to stop making excuses. And I would say that I've done a pretty good job of that over the last you know, couple of weeks. But when I look back over the last year where I didn't make any progress, because I have already lost 60 pounds, but then I just kind of stalled out. I was, I was making excuses. Um, I find, found out that I have fibroids um, and they were making, they were causing it to, to make it really hard for me to lose weight. But I was using that as an excuse to just not even try anymore because I had, I had lost 60 pounds and then I had plateaued and I plateaued for about a year. I was still working hard and I was still doing a lot. I was very, very active but I wasn't losing any weight and I couldn't figure out why. I was also having some other symptoms so I went to the doctor and long story short I was told that I have fibroids and that they were causing hormonal fluctuations that made it just about impossible to lose weight. Um, so I just used that as an excuse for the whole last year and didn't do anything and um, I paid for it. <laughs> so um, no more excuses. I'm not going to allow anything to give an excuse, you know, because for a long time it was, well, I had four kids in four years. That was, you know, it's, it's okay if I'm heavy because, well, it's just expected. You know, that was a lot. And two of those were C-sections and well, then I also have two special needs kids and so, you know, they take up so much time. I just don't have time to work out and you know, all that negative self-talk is ridiculous. You know, I also went on medications for a while that caused me to gain a lot of weight, but that, that was what triggered the weight gain to begin with. It wasn't even the kids. Um, so, you know, point in cases, you know, I've, I've spent years now making excuses and, and I just need to stop. I need to stop and I'm going to stop and I have stopped. I have no more excuses. Um, I mentioned in one of my first videos that a one hour workout is only 4% of your day. You know, I saw that on Facebook somewhere and when I saw that it really hit home. I said, 4%? Really? That's it? <laughs> That's all it is? Oh, okay. I guess I really don't have any excuse to not just do it one hour a day. Uh, so, so I, I got back into it. Um, I would all, you know, I, I have 60 pounds left to lose. I would like to lose that in the next year. Uh, if I only lost one pound a week in 52 weeks, that would be 52 pounds. Um, so I'm, I'm very confident that I can do that. When I lost the last 60 pounds, it was, um, um, I think it was about eight months, I think is how long it took me to do it. So uh, I can do it again. Not a problem. Now I know the last little bit is harder to lose, but I can do it. I'm confident. Um, and lastly, I want to inspire others you guys by by allowing you to follow along with me as I lose this weight you know it's one thing to you know you see like for instance the P90X commercials you know you see the before and the after pictures and well that's all wonderful and fine and great and there's plenty of videos on YouTube and everywhere else that will show you results but not very many people who let you follow along with them while they are actually <laughs> losing the weight and telling you what they're doing and what they did and what they plan to do. They don't do that. Um, so so that's, that's one of my biggest goals is to inspire people to do what I'm doing because they see a real person doing it. 
and it's not so it's not hype it's not there's no there's absolutely no question and um, you know you're gonna look back at these videos in a year and go whoa <laughs> there's a big difference there um, I do have intentions to uh, set up a, a another camera in the area where I work out and so I'm, I'm going to actually be recording that and then I will put clips of it and stuff up on YouTube and it won't be pretty at first but as I go along I think we'll start seeing changes so um, I think that's going to be very exciting so um, back to our, our little series about water um, we have talked about having water first thing in the morning right when you get up and you know since I've been doing that consistently I find that I I really like I, I I have to get up and I have to get a drink of water first thing in the morning or I'm just so parched that I just can't I can't process anything <laughs> all I can think about is getting a drink of water um, before each meal and before a workout uh, before during and after a workout I should say really it's all those speaking of I'm very thirsty so I'm gonna get a drink Ah, see so much better um, so today we're going to talk about any time that you take medication now I know that a lot of times you know you read the little bottle and it says um, you know drink with a full glass of water eight ounces of water how many people really do that you know I um, people I know they don't you know they, they take just enough water to wash it down and that's it um, my husband actually a lot of times will take medication without water he'll just put it and swallow it and I could I could never do that um, but the reason why that why that's on the bottle is because if you don't have enough water or fluid in your stomach to to break down those pills you're not going to get the full effect of those pills um, maybe not any effect who knows uh, but what it does you know is, is it as I mentioned with uh, before a meal it hydrates the lining of your stomach which allows it to be more receptive to absorbing the food the nutrients the medications whatever it is it allows it to absorb more readily into your body so the more water you can drink with it um, eight ounces the faster that that medication is going to start to work and get into your bloodstream and actually do its job so if you're in a lot of pain for instance and you need to take an ibuprofen or a Tylenol uh, you know maybe you're really sore from a workout it happens um, uh, you know make sure that you're taking a full glass of water with that it's very important um, and of course inversely if you end up taking too much medication you know water is also very good for helping to flush that out the other side so uh, you know just just make sure though that you're you're drinking your water and anytime that you have medication um, the other part about that is if you get dehydrated um, and you try to take medicine um, just like with the stomach lining being hydrated when you drink the water if you're dehydrated your stomach lining actually can get somewhat hard uh, along with all of your other various organs and blood vessels and tissues and everything they they tend to harden up a little bit kind of like when a creek dries up and you know you see the top of the creek gets that hard cracked looking surface now if you dig down further you're gonna find some water but that top layer is hard and that's what happens to our body when we get dehydrated so not nothing or at least very little can actually get to where it needs to go so it's very important that you actually drink that water with the medications um, so that's that's pretty much it um, just a reminder for the challenge group it's going to start on March 4th um, you know it's free to join if you want to you just send me a message uh, I do have it, it is going to be a P90X group and so I will be talking about P90X and I will be talking about um, Shakeology and some other things but don't feel like you can't join just because you can't afford to get a program or Shakeology or anything like that I want to help you and I want everyone to be able to join in and get support and encouragement and accountability and make friends um, you know it's so much easier to lose weight when you have a friend with you to help you um, excuse me so that's going to start um, like I said on the fourth it'll run for 30 days um, we're going to have a point system it's going to be an activity based point system so the more you do the more points you get the person who gets the most points at the end is going to get a copy of Shalene Johnson's book push 
uh, which is very motivational and really talks a lot about forming really good solid habits to get you um, you know to get you on track not just for fitness goals and weight loss goals but for your own personal goals as well um, and so that's it for today. Visit fitstronglean.com for any information about Beachbody that you might need. I also have a free workout video on there for you. Um, and again, I just let me know. I'm about to go do shoulders and arms. Yeah, do I, do I have guns yet? No, no, I'm still... Oh, oh, look, see, did you see that? Yep, a little bit of muscle there coming in. Uh, so shoulders and arms and then abra and we're going to bring it, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.